Hey dear everybody, welcome to a new video of Amazing Max Stuff. This video we are going to talk about the length of a vector because in JITGEN, this is the JITGEN we got last time, there is an object called length, which basically it's an operator that will give us the length of a vector as an output. But we didn't talk yet about vectors, so that's a good occasion to start talking about vectors and let's see what actually a vector is. Let's go in this beautiful paint drawing. So basically a vector, we can see it in two ways. We can see it as a container for multiple values, like for example if I create a vector here and I write some numbers inside, it's just going to be a container for values that I can then use for example as, as a color. Exactly. I can uh, use it as a position for example for a pixel in space. But we can also think about vectors in another way. We could also think about vectors like something that brings us from one point in space to another point in space. So for example if I'm here at this point in the graph, let's say that this point is 1, minus 1, so this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, point 1, minus 1. If I apply this vector to this point, this point is going to end somewhere like here. So a vector is basically always something that has a direction and has a magnitude or length. So the magnitude of the vector or the length is basically how long is actually this vector. We could also, we could also see this as how strong is this actually this vector. Because for example if there is a gust of wind and this vector is only a small, is only a small arrow, my point from here is going to end up here. But if the gust of wind is very strong, the vector is going to bring this point up here. Okay, so the vector has always a direction and a length. It's basically a quantity that cannot be represented with a single number. For example, I cannot see there is a gust of wind that has a value of 10. Okay, but I, don't, I didn't tell you what the, where this gust of wind is going. So basically my information is incomplete. To represent a gust of wind, I have to say where, it's, where it is pointing. Okay, so a vector can either be these two things, either it's just a container for multiple values or it's a force or something that has a, a direction and a length or magnitude. So length is equal to magnitude. Now looking at that, actually let's look at the little patch I've created, uh, some graphics I have created. Uh, look at those graphics, basically this is a three-dimensional space, this is a vector. And if you see, it has a x component of 1, an y component of 1, and a z a component of 0. So it's a two-dimensional vector, right? It lives in, the, in a two-dimensional plane. Now we can see that the length of this vector is the hypotenuse of a right triangle, and we can calculate this hypotenuse with the Pythagorean theorem, right? So basically we make x multiplied by itself plus y multiplied by itself, and then we take the square root of that, and we get the length from that. And this is exactly the way we calculate the length of a vector, because a vector has two components, an x and a y, the length uh, is going to be the hypotenuse of this triangle. But this also works in three dimensions, for example if we move this vector in three dimensions, we can then simply add the z component to that to find the length of this vector, because it's like if we will get the hypotenuse of this triangle here, x and z, then we will get this hypotenuse, and then if we will get the um, hypotenuse of this triangle formed by the pink line and the green line, this will be then the yellow vector. Okay, so we are just adding another component to the, to the calculation here. Okay, and, and in this way we find the length. So one other thing to say about vectors is that they always have a tail, which is the end of the vector, and a head, which is the head of the vector, basically. So if I just write something inside JITGEN, like a vector... 0, 0, 1, this vector is going to have an x component of 0, an y component of 0, and a z component of 1. So the tail of this vector is always going to be the origin. If I don't specify a tail, the tail is always going to be the origin. If I want to specify a tail, then the vector will be the difference between the tail and the head. So for example, if I say 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, this is the tail and this is the head. If I subtract the tail from the head, 
it's going to give me a vector uh, that goes from this point in space to that point in space. Okay, so let's take a look with paint. So if I got a vector, this is the tail of the vector and this is the head. To find the actual vector, I simply have to subtract the tail to the head. So head minus tail equal vector. Okay, so if I subtract the tail to this vector, it's basically like if I bring it back to the origin. So a vector that has only the, the head, that has only one component, is like if it's, we are subtracting from it a tail of zero, right? So it's always considered a starting from the origin. So that's basically everything we need to know about vectors for the moment. Now, uh, let me delete the stuff we did last time. Let's take, for example, the sigma normalized coordinates. Let's read the x, let's read the y. Let me take this graphics away. Let's read the x and let's read the y and let's use those color, those two colors like the red and the green value. You remember that the values, uh, the colors in a JIT matrix are arranged in this way, alpha, red, green and blue. So we are basically filling those vector just using it as a, um, as a collection of components. And we are filling the red and the green planes of the output matrix. Okay. So we see that the values goes from minus 1 to 1 for the x and from minus 1 to 1 for the y. Now what we are getting here is actually a bunch of vectors that go from the center of the space to all the points of the matrix, to all the coordinates of the matrix. Because if I have a, 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 a cell here of the matrix and a cell here, and I get the coordinates of this vector, basically what I'm getting is a vector that goes from the beginning to these coordinates. So there is an object in Max that allows us to get the length of this vector. It's called length. Yeah, we, we saw it before, it's called length. So if I get this length of this vector and I use it, uh, let's say for the red color, that's what I'm gonna see. So in the center, this is the center of our world, this is zero, zero on the x, y uh, coordinates. So we are now in a two dimensional world. The distance, so the length of this vector from the center is going to be very small. That's why we see a, a black value. Let's actually apply this to all the channels. So we're going to use the, uh, the white. So when the length is starting to increase, so when this vector is actually getting bigger, because in the, in the center is like a small little vector, so its length is small. When we get farther from the center, the length of this vector is going to increase, right? So, so this means that the value we are going to see is going to get bigger and bigger until it arrives to what? Arrives to one here and then goes over one because it goes over one because if we take the Pythagorean theorem, you know, the best norm goes between uh, minus one and one. So let's say that the corner here of the coordinates is going to be 1 and 1 up here. So if we say, if we take the square root of 1 multiplied by 1 plus 1 multiplied by 1, this is basically going to be the square root of 2, right? Which is a number that is like 1.414, something like that. So this is going to be the length of our, of all the vectors that go from the center to all the cells of the matrix. So we know that the values are going to go up until one here and then they're going up uh, above 1.41 1 or something. Uh, if, for example, we try to we scale these values between 1.4, uh, we scale them between 0 and 1, and we have basically values that go between 0 and 1 on the farthest corner. So on the farthest corner we will have 1. All right, so this is the length of the vector. So for example, at this point, and this is very similar to something I saw in a video from Michele Zaccagnini some minutes ago. Shout out to, uh, to Michele. Is this how you say? Shout out? Um, because this video is really cool and uh, yeah, I really enjoyed watching it. I will put the link in the description to Michele's channel. Um, so what I want to do now is to take, for example, the sign of this length. So once, once we get it multiply scale between 0 and 1, we can, for example, then multiply the length by... Yeah, let's actually multiply them by 10. And for example, we can take the sine of that. So the sine will go between 0 and 1 for an input that goes between 0 and pi. So if we multiply this from some random values then, or for example, you can multiply. So if you multiply this by pi, we will basically have 10 times the cycle between 0 and 1. So basically, 5 times a full cycle. And then we can, for example, we could even take the absolute value of the sign as we did in the past video to get always positive numbers or we could just clip between 0 and 1 
in order to get a bit uh, more distanciated circles. So this is, for example, how we can um, how we can create circles inside the gen. Now, as you can see, the circle is not completely uh, circular. It's actually being distorted with the image, and that's because this should be adjusted by the ratio of our window. So we should divide the x by the y. We don't do it now because we should get the 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 size of the p window, which is uh, I don't know. It's a long. I could have done it, but I, I'm even too lazy for that. We'll do this in the next videos. So what we could do is, for example, now as we did before, is to sum the sign the time to that. So before we go inside the sign, we just basically sum to this the the time. Oh, maybe we subtract it to go the other way around. Exactamente. And we can multiply it by something bigger because uh, otherwise it'd be too slow. Something like that. So we could also, for example, sum some value to the S norm in order to move our center somewhere else. And this is what very similar to, to the video I was mentioning before. For example, yeah, if we move the if we sum these to, to plus four and, and plus five, we basically move it to the left. If we if we would subtract those numbers, we will move this the center uh, bottom right. Okay, we could, for example, like uh, we could, for example, get the, the param time, get the sine of the time, and the cosine, and just uh, mess around a bit with those values. We could, for example, multiply this by zero point something just to get some random numbers. I could do this with GPFG, but uh, for the moment I would like to keep everything inside gen, so we will do just something like this. We will just multiply this by by some random numbers and we'll get the cosine of that and just do something like this very very naive random uh, values they're not really random I mean. there is a difference in the phase of the sine and cosine so it's still okay so this looks nice we can maybe divide this by two in order to not go too far from the center something like that let me multiply this by something bigger uh, too big 0 0.5 is probably good okay cool uh, if we make this number bigger, we're gonna have more of these values. Okay, so that's one thing. If we make this value bigger, we are going to kind of zoom in. So, for example, if we multiply this by 2, we are going to actually zoom out. If we divide this by 2, multiply by 0 0.5, we're going to kind of zoom in. So, for example, we could also attach this to sine value and multiply this by minus 1, 1, something like this. Oh, something like that. <laughs> Whoa. Ah, uh, before I leave you, let's just see one more thing. We can, of course, use this value between 0 and 1 as an interpolation factor between, uh, for example, our two videos. So let's get the input 1 and let's get the input 2. But just to remind you that this is always a possibility. You can multiply this by something smaller. Okay, this was it. I leave you to the last part of the video. Okay, this uh, went a bit too far, I believe, to be just a simple informative video. But uh, yeah, this should explain uh, kind of uh, how the length of a vector works. In the next videos, we are going anyway to use a lot the length of a vector uh, to do a lot of stuff inside JitGen. So yeah, if this was a bit too much, don't worry about it. We are going to fix this in future videos. But anyway, if you've got questions or you've got uh, stuff you want to, to tell me, just uh, you can just write me. Or even better, you can join my pattern where I will, um, where you can directly write me. You can join the Discord channel. Okay, yeah, so thank you very much for following and uh, see you in the next video. Ciao, everybody.